Welcome, welcome one and all to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Once again, it was an insane day for America because it was a regular day for Donald Trump. <laughs> he had not one, but two criminal trials today. One in New York, one in Georgia at the exact same time. <laughs> the only way to follow all the action was to have multiple TVs. That's why I watched all the proceedings today at a Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> I had the hot habeas jalapeno poppers. <laughs> then is this just tomorrow? Tomorrow, Judge Angoran is expected to issue a verdict in Trump's $370 million <laughs> civil fraud trial. And I'll tell you right now, whatever he rules, I believe the verdict is unfair to me. Because <laughs> I don't have a show tomorrow. And justice delayed is punchlines denied. <laughs> those, those, three, those three are just today and tomorrow. He's also facing the January 6th trial in Washington, D.C., the classified documents case in Florida, Colorado trying to throw him off the ballot for insurrection, and his appeal in the verdict of the E. Jean Carroll defamation case in which a jury has already found that Trump committed sexual assault. And yet, despite all this, people want to hire this maniac to be president. Come on. And in light of all that, in the light of all that, I'd like to make a brief public service announcement. This is <laughs> up. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Look. I know, I know how numb we've become, but it's not normal. No other candidate for the presidency has ever had to pause his campaign to defend himself in multiple courts. And I would like to point out that in all seven of his cases, no one, no one doubts that he did these things. We're just sitting around patiently waiting to find out if the wheels of justice will grind fast enough for there to be any consequences. And the media is covering it like it's any other political story, like it's all horse race. But in this horse race, one of the horses is old. <laughs> well, one of the horses is old, has hoof and mouth disease, and keeps quoting horse Hitler. <laughs> now, at least send him to the glue factory. <laughs> At least in one case, things are not looking good for Trump. This morning, he was here in New York, where he is facing 34 counts of falsification of business records over the hush money payment to porn star Stormy Daniels. Trump's lawyers were doing their best to delay this case, but the judge was not having it. He announced the trial would be moving forward two minutes after the hearing got underway. Yeah. Which, two minutes, okay? Which is twice as long as Trump lasted with Stormy. Now, so she says. Shiitake. Now, the trial, the trial begins March 25th, and in this historic case, the former president will be represented by Trump attorney and most expensive dish on the cannibal restaurant menu, <laughs> Todd Blanche. <laughs> Todd Blanche tried in vain to argue that the case was a discombobulated package of politically motivated charges. Coincidentally, according to Stormy, Trump also has a discombobulated package. <laughs> But Judge uh, Juan Merchan wasn't buying it and got frustrated with Blanche's bombastic court style. The judge snapped, stop interrupting me, please, and Mr. Blanche, please have a seat. Trump's lawyers are acting out so much at this point the judges have to come to court with a spray bottle. No, no, Mr. Blanche. <laughs> Not on the table. Not down, down, <laughs> down, down. Bad lawyer. So this was not a great day for Donald Trump. But he told reporters, this isn't just about him. It's a sad thing. It's a sad day for New York. Is it, though? <laughs> I got a room full of New Yorkers right here. Let me check. How do you feel about uh, Trump facing criminal justice? They hide their grief well. <laughs> the case Trump did not attend was down in Atlanta, where the former president is charged with attempting to overturn the 2020 Georgia election. But today's hearing was about whether to disqualify the prosecutor, which could delay the case for months. The prosecutor in question is Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis. 
seen here realizing that YouTube won't let her skip this ad for Verbo. <laughs> At issue is Willis's romantic relationship with a member of her team, special prosecutor and alluring stranger on Days of Our Lives. <laughs> Nathan Wade. Both Willis and Wade have acknowledged the relationship. Okay, it's gonna be strange for Donald Trump to be involved in legal proceedings that center around a consensual relationship. <laughs> Wait a minute, you were both into it? How does that work? <laughs> Do you sign the NDA at the same time? I don't... Just tell me who pays who. That's what I want to know. <laughs> but the lawyers for one of Trump's... <laughs> See, they love me. They love me here. But the lawyers for one of Trump's co-defendants allege that the two were romantically involved when Willis hired Wade in 2021 to manage the investigation. Of course, tales of courtroom lust are nothing new. We all remember the classic film, 12 Horny Men. <laughs> now, if they were already dating, the defendant's lawyers say Willis is guilty of conflicts of interest claiming that Willis paid Wade more than $650,000 for his work and then profited personally when he used that money to take her on expensive vacations, including cruises in the Bahamas. Profited personally, I think, is a generous description of taking a cruise. Honey, would you like to spend a week on a floating norovirus Petri dish where all the children have peed in the pool? Before you answer, there's a magician. Now... Willis and Wade say they started their relationship after he was hired, and they argue that even if the allegations about their relationships were true, they wouldn't warrant disqualification from the Trump case. Well, yeah, their personal lives don't have anything to do with the facts of the case. It has been established that lawyers are allowed to have sex in the legal precedent of suits. <laughs> now, I got something. I got something. I got one thing. But today in court, one of Willis' former colleagues uh, said uh, in testimony that the relationship began right after the two met in 2019, an allegation that Willis disputed today vehemently. When I met him, Judge Reeves introduced us. He handed me his business card. I'm unsure if I handed him my business card, but we exchanged information. He said, if you ever need any help, give me a call. And he walked to the parking lot. Um, so after, after that, you started dating shortly thereafter, correct? That's a lie. That's one of your lies. Now, I don't know who's telling the truth here yet, but I will say exchanging business cards isn't exactly a meet-cute. <laughs> the movie's not called When Harry Networked with Sally. <laughs> now, at one point, Willis had had enough and really laid into the opposing counsel. You're confused. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. Damn straight. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. Here's the thing. Yes, it's true. Donald Trump and his associates are on trial in this, one of the most important cases in the history of our republic. So, and I've just got one follow-up question here. Given that if you are removed from the prosecution, it could delay this trial until after the election, how good was this sex? <laughs> good enough to risk democracy over? Because I've never had sex that good. <laughs> you, you, know, you know what really feels good? Donald Trump going to prison. That, my friends, is what they call the real happy ending. <laughs> now, Trump, Trump keeps mixing up people in his speeches, like saying, you know, Obama was who he ran against when he meant Biden, and, and Nikki Haley was in control of the Capitol when he meant Nancy Pelosi, and this makes a lot of people question his mental competency. So last night, in a rally down in South Carolina, he offensively went on the defensive. When I say that Obama is the president of our country, blah, blah, blah. They go, he doesn't know that it's Biden. He doesn't know. So it's very hard to be sarcastic. When I interpose, because I'm not a Nikki fan and I'm not a Pelosi fan, and when I purposely interpose names, they said he didn't know Pelosi from Nikki, from Tricky Nikki, Tricky Nikki. What's happening? Is he just doing stream of consciousness slam poetry? 
Tricky Nicky, Tricky Dicky, Slicky Licky, Sticky Wicky, Fuzzy Wuzzy, Wooly Willy, Free Willy, Whale. <laughs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> then, then, he, then he went on and claimed that Biden's presidency has been hurting us on the world stage. Perhaps most importantly, we are a nation that is no longer admired, respected, or listened to on the world stage. Yes, we are no longer respected. <laughs> Reminds me of that Aretha Franklin song. We got a great show for you tonight. My guest is Billy Joel, but when we come back, 